I'm here because we need our Giants fixed. And right now, things aren't going well for the Giants as they've lost five straight games. Of course, the last game of that three-game set at Coors Field, swept over the weekend to this, by the San Diego Padres, and rolled last night by the Mets 13-3. And not a lot of things going well. But first, we've got to ask Flynn, did you have a good time out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the PGA I Championship? What a, what a classic <laughs> comeback from Justin Thomas. It was a great uh, ending to the tournament. I had a wonderful time in Tulsa, the oil capital of the world, it's self-proclaimed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and it was a great golf course, great championship venue, uh, provided you know some misery for players for a lot of the tournament, and then at the end, some thrills for all of us. So I thought it was a great PGA. And uh, and I did. I loved being there. Yeah, Mito Pereira pulling a, a Jean Vandevelt, if you will, <laughs> and throwing up on himself at the end. I my heart sank for the guy. He obviously hits it into the water uh, on eighteen with an opportunity to just par it, and he, and he wins the championship. And instead, he double bogeys it, and then there's a playoff with Will Zalatoris and Justin Thomas. I just love the class from Mito there, but that's not the story. Justin Thomas, he he is a guy that we've been talking about his talent for years, and to go from one major to two majors this is a game changer for this guy and in a lot of ways he was the best player all week you know it's funny in golf uh golf's like baseball in a way in that the the quote ballpark influences so much of sure. how each game is played you know the venues change and the weather changes day to day unlike baseball in golf because you have so many players in the early rounds, of course you have to you have to flight out the, the players, and so one group of players plays early day one, late day two. One plays the opposite, late day one, early day two. And in the case of this year's tournament, the, the wave that Justin Thomas was in, which was late on Thursday, early on Friday, got by far the worst end of the draw in terms of weather, wind, and scoring. And the fact that Justin Thomas came out of that second round right in the mix to me meant that he played the best golf of everybody because he had some really bad conditions to deal with. So it did take a borderline collapse, and it took a lot of other stuff happening around him. But in the end, he was, you know, to me, the most worthy champion because of what he did early on to overcome just pure bad luck with the way the, the weather went. Uh, he had a great week, and he is a guy who is so fun to watch because he's got all the tools. He's got all the shots, short game, long game, curve it left, curve it right, flight it high, keep it low. Uh, there aren't as many of those players as there used to be. You know, there used to be more guys like that. The game has evolved, uh, you know, just like baseball, just like basketball. The game has changed and simplified in some ways. Three-point shots and dunks, home runs and strikeouts, golf, bomb drives and wedges in, uh, and it's become homogenized in a way. And Justin Thomas isn't like that. He's a creative player who can do it all, and, he, and that's why I'm, I'm hoping that he takes even another step forward and becomes a, you know, a big star in the game because he's, he's different and he's really fun to watch. Well, as Justin Thomas takes a step forward, Flem, what about Tiger Woods, man? I was very sad to watch him in that third round just struggling. And, of course, he withdrew from the tournament, didn't play in the final round. It maybe he just needs rest, but it felt like I don't know. I it just it felt like he was cooked, man. It was just like what he's gone through over the last year. To me, it was depressing to see one of our all time greats Agreed. in the game of golf go out like that, man. The conditions were rough. It was windy out there. You were out there, Flim. We all know that. But Tiger just it just looked bad, Flim. Yeah, it was shocking how cold it was. I mean, it was, you know the the scene because we had the. We do the coverage on the first two days, and then on the weekends, you know, we're, we're happy to do it, but we don't get the final group coverage on the weekend CBS does, so we do the morning. So we had Tiger for most of his round on that Saturday morning that you're describing, and, you know, the, the image of him finishing on Friday afternoon, uh, sweat pouring down. He was just drenched in sweat. It was 90 degrees. It was humid. And then we came back the next morning and literally – uh, the fans had ski caps and huge jackets on. I, I've never, ever seen a bigger weather change in a shorter period than we had. And that was definitely a part of it for Tiger. It was miserable out there. His body wasn't working. But the other part is he kind of looked the same way at Augusta, and you just have to wonder whether, you know, he's got it in him to beat a lot of the world's best players for a day or two. Uh, but does he have it in him to to do it? 
consistently for four days? I don't know if we know the answer to that yet. I sure hope that as he gets healthier, he's, he can dig deep and do maybe maybe do more Tiger things over four days, but I'm not sure we know that. Yeah, you know, uh, we got Dave Fleming with us, the voice of the San Francisco Giants. He was doing the PGA Championship on ESPN this week. It, it, look, let's go in another direction. Let's go to the Giants uh, because I'm, I'm frustrated as a Giants fan right now. It feels like the... You know, the low end of the season right now. I don't think they're this bad, but I'm looking at the, the raw pitching and I want to know what happened here. They, they have the 24th best team ERA, 25th whip. They've given up the third most amount of hits in, in baseball right now. They have the 27th, uh, worst batting average against this pitching that was so deep early on in the season has now cratered. Why is that so? It's a really good question. Um, and it's hard to answer it because, I mean, if there was one thing I was sure of, it was the Giants were going to pitch, um, especially considering, I mean, I guess I, I should qualify that. I thought, well, the Giants are going to pitch as long as their starters don't get hurt, and their starters have, for the most part, been healthy. You know, we had uh, Cobb miss a couple starts. We had uh, Wood out just briefly. But otherwise, uh, you know, it's been the main guys have been there. Uh, and that should concern the Giants, that they're not pitching well, even though everybody is healthy, because I didn't know that that was really even possible. I would say it's a couple things. Number one, the numbers have gotten skewed. Uh, you know, it's still early enough in the season where the numbers can be skewed by a couple games of just total blowout city, and the Giants have sure had a few yeah. of those. Uh, and it, it hasn't been the position player pitching's fault that the numbers have have been skewed. Luis Gonzalez actually has done a good job in that role. But when you're running guys out there who are too tired to be out there, you don't want to be pitching in certain circumstances, you're asking for those numbers to go in the wrong direction. So that's a small part of it. It's not the biggest part. Uh, and, it, you know, something that you and I, we talked about early in the year, I think is a bigger part than everybody is acknowledging right now. Giants defense is not very good. Mm. It's not very good. Five errors for Crawford already. Yeah, and, and it's not just the errors. Uh, you know, last night, uh, Darren Ruff, it's not his fault. He's, he's he absolutely busting his tail to get to that ball, but that's a ball that gets caught by most left fielders, by most teams. Mm -hmm. That ball doesn't fall in. Mm -hmm. And they scored five runs after that thing falls. Uh, that was the third out of the inning. Alex Cobb had great stuff. If that ball gets caught, maybe the Giants win last night's game 4-1. to one. I mean, I think that's entirely possible. Uh, and you, you don't catch a ball that should be caught, needs to be caught, and five runs later in about 30 seconds, <laughs> you're down 5-2. to two. And then it's like, oh, here we go again. So, Flynn, with the bullpen. I mean, I do. Go ahead, Flynn. Go ahead. I mean, I just, I just think that defense, and, you know, now the Giants are, are hurt enough now mm -hmm. to where they're almost having to chase. They, they just don't have options. So, okay, we don't have our best defensive group out there. Well, we got it. You know, Jock's got to play the field. Ruff's got to mm. play the field. Wilmer's got to play the field. You know, some guys that you can protect a little bit and hide, uh, you don't have those options right now. And so I think it's getting exposed a little bit more than the Giants were counting on. Yeah, no doubt. And that's where I was kind of going, Flynn. Like, Alex Cobb, obviously scuffling, but Darren Ruff doesn't help him out yesterday. Alex Wood gets roughed up over the weekend, only goes three innings. Logan Webb and Rodon, for, for the most part, have been solid. And I know Rodon has lost two straight, but he's kept the Giants in the game, especially Saturday against the Padres when they lost 2-1. But I'm looking at that Padres team, and I'm saying, Boy, they're a lot better because of the manager they have in Bob Melvin, and they don't even have Tatis Jr., and they're right behind the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if the Giants are going to be able to get that depth and recapture that magic they had last season when they won 107 games. It's going to be harder because, I, I mean, the Padres are going to be one main reason why it's going to be harder because yeah. they're they're way better. Uh, and so the division is just, it, it was already tough, and now it's a lot tougher. And, you know, even the Rockies are better, and the Diamondbacks are way better than they were last year. Uh, so the Giants piled up all those wins against the bottom end of the division. They beat up on the Padres once the Padres season went sideways, and that's not available this year. So uh, you're right about that. And that makes it, it – it, I'm not saying they can't win the division because they can. You know, there's right. six games out. It's May. There's a long, long way to go. We know this Giants team is capable of being better. But, I mean, the division is going to be harder to get. They had to win 107 last year to win it, 
And in some ways, it may not take that number this year, but it's going to be harder in 2022. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I mean, Jock struggling, Cross struggling at the plate, although last night was a nice uptick. Yaz has looked great. That, that, there's no doubt yep. about it, but everybody else seems to be uh, slumping. You referenced the injuries. I'm really worried about this Brandon Belt knee injury. He looked great early on in the season. He, he's, he came in with a kind of a bum knee. They gave him a quarter zone shot, and then now it sounds like it's not feeling good at all. I'm really worried his season might be in jeopardy. How are you feeling about Brandon Belt right now? Yeah, you should be worried. I mean, I don't think his season's in jeopardy. I think he's going to be back when the 10 days are up. He seems okay. to think it's going to be fine with just a few days rest. But it's going to happen again. I mean, uh, it is. It just, that's, I mean, we just have, uh, how could you believe that it's not going to happen again uh, based on the last few years? And the Giants build in for that. That's why they're so obsessed with, depth and options and that's why they have both Ruff and Wilmer and you know Listella can go over there and play and Wade can play first base but when several of those guys are out and Wade is having a hard time staying healthy uh, you know that should be a concern Tommy Listella I mean is he going to stay healthy the rest of the year the track record lately would say absolutely not uh, so you got I mean you have a you have a situation where you have an older team some guys who are beat up right now, and you have to believe that, that that's not just disappearing. And so you're, you're right to be concerned about that. that can, they, can they work around it? Yes, they can. But are they a way better team when Brandon Belt is in there? They are. Let me ask you a question about the Doves because we're, we're obviously the Warriors uh, can wrap up the Western Conference Finals today and advance to the NBA Finals for the sixth time in the last eight years. And Shaska and I were talking about this earlier today, Flynn, about how improbable this run has been for the Warriors. Nobody expected them to get to this point. Had question marks about the core, the youngsters, the coaching staff, all the injuries. You've been around the Bay for a long, long time. You've seen those great Giants teams in 2010, 2012, 2014, and 2010. It was, of course, improbable. Last year came out of nowhere, 107 wins. Where does this season, because you pay attention to basketball, you watch the Warriors. Where does this rank for you when it comes to the Golden State Warriors being on the precipice of another NBA Finals? Well, for me, it's the it, it's certainly the most, quote, improbable. Although, you know, I never put it past this group. I'm in the middle of the season. I thought, this team's going to win it all again. Uh uh, but I was—I said it with surprise in my voice, uh, <laughs> and it, 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 I think you know a couple things. Uh oh, I think we're losing them just oh. a little bit. Ah, uh, dang, we lost Flip. All right, we'll let Flip, we'll let Flip go. Uh, man, I wanted to get his answer on that. He was about to get cooking there. Dave Fleming, of course, joins us every single. If we get him back on to answer that question, that's all good. See if he uh, if he does that hey, there. B, you know what was interesting to me. Middle of the Giants season. Oh, we got, Flynn, we got Flynn back now. Go ahead, Flynn, continue. Go, we will finish this off all right. Yeah, dude, I, come on. You can't cut me off right when I'm in yeah. the middle of my work. <laughs> no, no doubt. No doubt. We're losing you. We're like, oh, we got something there. Go ahead, reset, Flynn. It's all yours. Bob, Bob, Bob Myers is coming on deck. He needs to hear what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah, I, I miss seeing him. You know, it's really funny. Your kids get older. Bob and I are sort of neighbors, and I used to see him at the YMCA for kids' basketball. Yeah, and I don't see him anymore because our kids have gotten older. I miss seeing him in the at the little uh, kids' uh, hoops games. Anyway, uh, you know, the Warriors have their posy. They have the one guy who's been the constant through all of it, and that's Steph. You know, mm-hmm. they have the guy who makes everybody better. It all works around Steph. And then I, I think, to me, the other thing that I hope people appreciate uh, from this year Number one, they have a coach who's an all-time great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think sometimes people dismissed Kerr. Look how talented his team is. Look how many great players he has. You know, Steve's one of the best to ever do it. Thank and you. I hope it makes people appreciate Draymond. Because yep. when, when the Warriors didn't have Draymond at the end of the year, they were a mess. Mm-hmm. And as soon as he came back, all of a sudden all the pieces work together. And Draymond should go to the Hall of Fame someday. He's a He is a... Terrific, terrific, all-time great, all-around player, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I think he's been overlooked through all these years, and that to me has stood out. From it's not easy, it's not over yet. They're not going to cakewalk to the championship. But either team in the East is capable of beating them, 
But I think we're going to have another parade, and I think those are the reasons why. Hey, Dave, before you get out of here, we got Bob next. You already teased it. Bob Myers, the, <laughs> the GM of the forty of the uh, Golden State Warriors, <laughs> joining us. Who is more like T. Morant, Jaw's dad, while watching their children play basketball oh, at the YMCA? Is it Dave Fleming or Bob Myers? <laughs> well, it definitely ain't me. So. <laughs> it's, I, by by default, it has to be Bob. Uh, Bob, you know, I, I, and Bob used to help out coaching. I could never do that. I was, I, I, I was like, I, I am incapable of having the patience and the, you know, the the just the the good naturedness to coach little kids and. Uh, give them what they need. So I just stood in the corner, and sometimes I clapped, and sometimes I just kept my mouth shut. So you're saying you're not wearing shades and gold chains yeah. indoors, Flip? And bucket hats. And bucket hats. Yes. Oh my God! If you if you saw my getup for some of the some of those games, uh, I mean, it's like, did this guy comb his hair today? <laughs> yeah, a little. When you have little kids, sometimes you just roll down the hill and, all right, it's Sunday morning, get, give me a cup of coffee on the way out the door and uh, let me hide. Oh, that's buddy. too much, man. That uh, is funny stuff. I missed you, buddy. Yeah, we did miss you. Glad you had a great weekend at all. Yeah. You got away from the Giants, which is probably good after yeah. that disaster, disastrous weekend over against the Padres. As the Padres are rolling right now, Dodgers are rolling. Giants got to get going here. They've lost five straight. They take out the Mets again tonight. Flip, we'll talk to you next Monday, bud. Next week, long season. We got a long way to go. We'll get there. No doubt about that. Dave Fleming, the best. voice of the Giants, here breaking down He's a little bit best. of everything: some golf, some baseball, a little Bob. We got to ask hey, Bob about that coaching. I'm gonna a little, little scouting yeah. report right there. I'm